Okay, so yeah, um, I am Jacob, and I've been with Raiden for four years. Um, so yeah, I've been working on Raiden from the from the very beginning, and now I'm here giving a talk at a decentralized uh, conference, which I think is pretty cool. So um, what is the goal of Raiden? The, the goal of Raiden, or what we want to do, is to uh, making building scalable decentralized applications on top of Ethereum easy. Um, so what is the challenge of this? This is, of course, to get the user experience and the system architecture right. And yeah, this is a hard thing to, to, to solve, but we, we try to do it anyway. So to begin with, what is Raiden? Raiden is a payment channel network um, that works with any ESC20 compliant token. Uh, so this means that most parts of, of tokens on Ethereum, of course. Um, and how does it work? Um, so you make a, a, a deposit to a smart contract and this smart contract then is able to later on understand the um, balance proof messages that you send off chain. So you can send balance proof back and forward between nodes. Um, and then in the end, you, when you, or if you want to settle a channel, you uh, send it to the smart contract and the smart contract then is able to understand these uh, balance proofs. So you basically open a channel and then you have a channel open. You can do lots of um, transactions and once of transfers and once you want to settle a channel you send the latest balance proof that you received from your counterparty to a smart contract the smart contract is then able to understand this balance proof and will uh, look at the netted balances between the two nodes and pay out the difference there so that is um, how payment channels works in radium um, the cool thing is that it's not just one-to-one -one but you can do mediated payments in Raiden, which means that as long as there is a path uh, between two nodes in the network, uh, you can always send payments. So I we tried to show this in this slide where you can see there's a path from B to H and then B can, without being connected directly to H, send payments through mediated payments. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk a bit about uh, user experience because this is one of the the hard things to solve in general in the in the blockchain and Ethereum space. But very much so, this is also true for Raiden. Um, so current challenges for end users is that end users do not understand or do not necessarily understand the logic of payment channel networks and how to use them. The user interfaces are cumbersome to use and users might be unfamiliar, unfamiliar with the, the terminology. Users don't want to have to be online all the time. They don't want to, uh, or they want to be sure that their payments go through. So some kind of guarantee of this. And they don't want to run their own nodes necessarily. Um, so this is quite a list of challenges that we have to to solve, but we, we try to do this uh, through the next, uh, like I'll show you in the next steps how we try to solve this. So if we look at the, I don't want to have to be online all the time and I want my payments to go through, we solve these two things. Um, the first one we solve by having monitoring services. Um, so the point of monitoring services is that you can go offline and then this monitoring service will monitor your channel channels and uh, close it in case your counterparty closes the channel, then the monitoring service will be able to close the channel on your behalf. So yeah, it's basically a service that watches your channel and it allows you to be offline. Then for making sure that payments can go through, we have payment, uh, sorry, pathfinding services. And these services um, basically you ask them for the best route or the cheapest route, but, but the shortest or the cheapest or the best route. Um, so the best route would be a mixture of being short and cheap uh, from one, uh, from yourself to somebody else in the network. 
so these two services, uh, we are like third party services that are run to help the, the network be as healthy as possible. Um, the problem of people not wanting to run their own node. Um, for this, we have uh, the Radiant Light client. So the Radiant Light client is a JavaScript um, implementation of Radiant. At the moment, it is quite simplified. Um, but uh, in the long run, we aim to have the, the same functionality more or less than the Python client of Radiant. Uh, so right now, you can do only uh, send payments, but not receive or mediate payments. But we are currently working on these two, and we have an early proof of concept version that um, can mediate and receive payments. So this is really cool for um, any kind of uh, dApp that wants to use Raiden. And I made a small video showing the current state of the light client. So this is uh, run on my uh, smartphone in um, MetaMask. Um, so yeah, oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Here we go. So we connect to, we connect and here we actually use Radian, or we use sub keys. So we don't have to sign everything. Then we enter the address of the receiver and amount that we want to send, get a small summary and then we transfer the tokens and here it's through so it's quite easy to use and quite uh, quite quick as well so the, the vision is that people can use stuff like this in their whatever tab they they use this what i show right now is is our own reference implementation um so it's a dab built on top of the radian uh light client but anyone should be able to, to do something similar to this using the Radiant Light Client SDK. So this is uh, one of the things we're currently working on and I think it's, um, it's getting really, really cool. And yeah, you can try it yourself uh, by going to lightclient.radiant.network where you can spin up a girly note um, of the Light Client and try it out. Should work in any MetaMask uh, enabled browser or with three enabled browser. Um, option two for this um, issue would also be to uh, just making it easier to install and run uh, your own Radiant node. And for this, we're working together with uh, DapNode, where they, they offer Radiant packages that you can just run on your DapNode. If you don't know what DapNode is, it's basically like a, um, like an, a Linux image that runs, where you can choose different uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin packages to run. So you can run your own full node and you can run um, a Raiden on top of it. You can run a Bitcoin node, you can run Lightning node. So it's it's, uh, it's really cool and it makes it super easy to run a lot of this uh, infrastructure yourself. Other than that, we are also building onboarding tools. For instance, um, we have um, a Raiden wizard which uh, is very easy or nice for, for testing on Gurley. You just provide an um, Impura uh, endpoint and it basically funds your, creates an account and funds it with some ether and some testnet tokens, stuff like that. And then you're just um, ready to go. And we want to build something similar to this for, for um, mainnet where people can just send some F to, to, to this uh, wizard and then it will automatically get you some Radiant tokens and whatever not, whatever else you need to, to use the Radiant network. Yeah, and you can check that out already by yourself on the link here. It's just for Gali at the moment. Um, so what are the challenges for projects that want to use Radiant? Um, some projects don't want to have uh, to understand complex payment channel network technology. Uh, that they use in, the, in their pro uh, products, and they don't want to force their, their users to run a node. Um, some have certain features that they, they need before it makes sense for them to use it, and some other projects don't want like complexity to increase or a worse experience for their users. Um, so if you don't want to have to understand complex payment ch uh, channel technology, uh, we 
solve this through a high-level API that aims to abstract away all the, the complexity and makes it quite easy to just uh, interact with this API to do payments and get information about your node, stuff like that. It's quite simple and you can check it out in our documentation or the developer portal and we are always uh, ready to answer questions in our Gitter as well if any should arise while you're trying out Braden. Um, yeah, so if you don't want to force your users to run a full uh, node, then again, we offer the, or we have the Raiden Light Client SDK, which is, uh, yeah, works in any uh, web three enabled browser. And I've already talked about it, so I don't want to talk more about this right now. Um, if you need a certain feature, then we are very happy to, to help people or add a certain feature to, to Raiden if, if it makes, um, sense. For instance, we worked with the uh, Exchange Union who made the first swap between Bitcoin and Ethereum and they used uh, like an atomic swap from Raiden and Lightning. Um, and they asked for a withdrawal feature. So being able to withdraw funds from your channels uh, in Raiden without closing the channel. So this is quite useful if you're a vendor or something and you're receiving funds, but you don't want to have to close your channel in order to withdraw some of the funds. So UX is heavily influenced by the underlying system design. And in, uh, yeah, so, so a lot of you know about this blockchain trilemma where it's, uh, you cannot have all three of these at the same time. Um, we try to, to, to optimize for a system architecture in Radiant, which uh, features a high degree of decentralization, high degree of security, good performance, low operation and transaction costs, uh, good usability and optional privacy. So Raiden can, when or if we solve all these things, actually circumvent this uh, trilemma. So trustlessness does not necessarily uh, mean speed, at least not in, in Raiden. So since we have no trust uh, in the system, we have um, the problem that if a transfer for a mediated transfer for some reason fails along the path, it will take quite a long time to do this uh, thing we call a refund transfer. So if something fails or nodes are not online or not uh, following the rules of the system, transfers can get slow. Um, so as you can see here, transfers if a transfer fails, it takes longer because we need to do these refund uh, transfers. And they exist and they fix it to some extent, but they require double the capacity of a transfer. So if you wanted to send five tokens, you'd actually need 10 because five of the tokens will be locked up for the refund transfer uh, period. So you have to have 10 in order to actually make this transaction. Um, next step to implement and to fix this would be to have cancelable transfers. Um, yeah, so ease of use is not the same as necessarily the same as adjustability. So an example of this is we have highly adjustable mediation fee. Uh, we have a highly adjustable mediation fee framework in Raiden where users can earn fees by mediating payments through their open channels. Um, so this basically means that you run a node and you will allow that other payments can go through your node. Um, and you can earn fees by this. It's not mandatory. Uh, so nodes decide whether they want to, to mediate or not. Uh, and you can then structure what kind of fees you, you, you want to use depending on your needs. And the fees are paid in the, in the token which is transferred. So for the respectable, respective um, token network. Um, and some fee models can actually facilitate channel balancing. So we have imbalanced fees that try to make sure that um, the path that is chosen for a transfer will try to balance out the network so that the overall capacity of the of the network instead of using the the, the best path sometimes. So you can actually do that and uh, make fees from that. Um, 
yeah, the mediation fee component. It's like a flat fee or a proposal fee to the transaction side or an imbalance fee that I just talked about. And both the outgoing and incoming channel will be considered when calculating the, the total fee. So that would be if you have, if you're a mediator and in one direction you have a, a low capacity and the other you have a high capacity, then there would be a fee paid out to try and balance it in the, in the low um, direction. Um, so a problem would be like under, is to understand and setting up your, your own fees that can be quite uh, complex and um, possibly most people don't really care about setting this up too much unless you're focused a lot on running a high capacity hop or something like this. Um, so a good solution here would, or a possible solution would probably need to work with um, defaults. Um, performance versus uh, privacy. So Raiden by default knows or it knows the full topology of the of the network, but it doesn't know the capacity of the channel. So what this means is since all deposits are made on the blockchain and the blockchain is publicly available to anyone, Raiden can always build up the topology and see what the initial channel states were, but Raiden doesn't know about the uh, payments that take place within the, the channel. So it doesn't know the current capacities. How you can, what you can then do is you can add, enable that your node tells the pathfinding service every time you have an update uh, to a channel balance. This will mean, this means that the pathfinding service can easily route payments through your node. Uh, so that's when you, you're mediating. But you can also uh, disable this. Um, and what this does is that the pathfinding services will not include your nodes in mediations. So you can still use the network, but you will not, your node will not mediate any transfers. Um, so yeah, we are looking very much forward to, to tackling all these um, challenges and we're a pretty good, um, we, we, we've come quite a long way to do this. Um, our next release, Alderaan, um, this is our upcoming mainnet release. We'll uh, include Raiden services. So that means like the, the pathfinding service and the uh, monitoring service. There will be mediation fees. There will be several, or like there'll be more token networks available. And there'll be these um, withdrawals while the channel is still open. And we try to enha enhance the usability a lot by offering the, the light client and improving on the UX through different onboarding tools, as um, mentioned. And we try to always improve Raiden on a protocol level as well. Um, yeah, so I think I'm already through my slides. It's definitely not 50 minutes, but uh, I didn't aim for that either. So is there any questions? or feedback, feel free to reach out to us at any point in time. And um, you can find me on Twitter um, through the handle at the bottom. Um, yeah, that's it for me. No questions. Hey, thanks, Jacob. No problem. Thank you. Maybe just one short question. Um, I'm not sure if you can answer it correctly, but um, when you talk about the channels, um, I'm I'm wondering how do you want to comply, if possible, I mean, or if necessary, with the so-called EML rulings, especially if you're a mediator of transactions. Then generally, I think you under at least under the common laws, how they are, uh, you know, how they are made right now, this could pose a massive problem. Don't you think so? Um, so I am not a lawyer and I don't know um, AML um, legislation too well, so I, I think I cannot answer this uh, okay. question, at least not to fulfill what... Okay. Uh, <clears throat> no, no, I'm, I'm, but, um, I'm on your, I'm on your uh, side, absolutely, you know, um, apparently, but um, I, I just wanted to make you aware that this might cause a problem, you know, there's two things. The one thing is um, that you are facilitating payments, yeah, which means that under the current laws in every country where you offer this service you have to have this license yeah uh, money 
uh, money forwarding uh, license, whatever it's called. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, is that you have to have full KYC if you're offering the channel, at least to my understanding. I just wanted to make you aware that this might be something, uh, some, some wall you might run into. Yeah, so, so we, I know that we are working closely together with, um, with a legal team. And so I, I'm pretty sure that like, this has definitely been taken into consideration, but I have no idea about uh, the specifics. So at least I, I, I don't dare to, to try and, 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 uh, and talk about it because I'm not sure that I would explain it correctly. But um, feel free to, to reach out yeah. if you, um, if I can put you in touch with someone who probably Super. knows more than I do. Okay, not great. Thanks a lot. It was really great uh, following you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.